Hi, I'm Jerry Nixon, and this is SQL Tips for Developers, a beginner's guide. I'm on the SQL Developer Experience team, and I'm here with Anaga, who's also on the same team. Anaga, thanks for being here. What do you think we should talk about? Thank you, Jerry. I know we connect to SQL Server, but what exactly is a connection? What is a SQL Server connection? All right, well, we can connect the SQL Server from a lot of different places, but let's talk about it from a website. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a client, maybe it's a website. It's always gonna be the same, so it doesn't really matter. But the idea is that a website itself is a computer. Before you talk about the software that's installed, it's the computer. SQL Server is installed on a computer, but it operates like it is a computer. That's because it operates like an operating system. So when I create a connection from my website over to SQL Server, it is negotiating a connection into the server itself. So remember, SQL Server has many databases inside it where all of your data is, where all of your code is, where all the execution occurs, but outside is SQL Server that protects it and manages how it interacts with the hardware. So that's the connection. Now, when I go in and I make a connection, I need to provide to it the login. So I am not logging in, by the way, to my database. I am logging into the server itself, and it establishes the communication from one device to another device across the Internet, locally, if, I, if I'm running it, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's what the connection is, that has, is that establishment. Now, it, one thing that's worth pointing out is in SQL Server, before you get to the SQL Server are a set of rules that says who can connect to it. Now, this is a particularly uh, interesting part when you have something running in the cloud, because you might have a rule that says nobody outside of the cloud, let's say it's in Azure, only services inside Azure can interact with the database. And so your website then, which is not in Azure, tries to interact with that database and fails. Why? One of the biggest reasons is because, well, there's a firewall rule that doesn't allow it to access. So let's pretend we've set our firewall rule the way we want to. We know our login and our password and everything is good. Now we have this kind of tunnel into SQL Server and our connection is made, which makes it worth at least talking about what a session is. A session is inside the connection. So once you have the physical connection made, right? So I'm establishing my TCP IP, I'm establishing what my encryption is, all of that to the side. Now I have a session into SQL Server itself where I can do work. It, in fact, there's a great analogy of, imagine you're gonna go to a music festival. Well, you have to get into the music festival first and that's your connection. But once you're in the music festival, even when you're not watching somebody sing or play, you're just walking around, you're having a session inside there. It has nothing to do whether or not you're in the gates. That's what the connection is. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit more. Once I have a session, then I have a user. And so remember, I logged in to get that connection to work. I have a user that allows me to kind of log in to my database. That's important because maybe I have two databases. So now I can connect to SQL Server with a single login, and I can have different types of roles, different types of permissions inside different databases. So connect to SQL Server. What's it mean? It means establishing one machine to another so that I can facilitate inside it a session so I can get to a database. If you're a developer now and you're ready to get started with SQL Server, you can go to the Azure portal and create an Azure SQL DB right now. Or you can go to aka ms SQL and download SQL Server and install it for yourself.